And now it is my honor to introduce our wonderful Lisa Coffee up here too. East meets West. Yay! <laughs> For the seeing in paradigm, Mr. Hands. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful to be back with you oh in person gosh. again. It I is can't really, this. It's, it's I know, so and Bill's here, and as oh, we're, everybody's here. It's wonderful to be with you in person and see you Big face hugs. to face. My eyes are looking at your eyes out there. So, <laughs> anyway, and so, uh, and we call this East Meets West. And I just want to say also, um, well, I'll, I'll talk to you privately about this, about Sunday mornings with um, Swami, well, with you, and it's, um, I, I want to change the time so we can all, so okay. I can be there. You can do that with the, with your guests? Yeah. It's, okay, with Swami M. Okay, great. Not this time. We'll figure but, it out. We'll okay, figure thank it out. you. We so are, are infinitely flexible. <laughs> Yay! Uh, I want to be like Bill. No blame, no shame. <laughs> I think I'm doing well, and then something happens. I go, yeah. do you see what you did to myself mainly, not to others? Totally so cool. it is it is mind games today, and I'm going to start, Okay. and then we'll just... We'll listen to each other and yeah. we'll come up with uh, your wisdom from the East, okay. which is Vedantism, and then religious science, which is all religions, yes. but also westernized Good. in that religion. So the question today is, are you willing to let go of your negative uh, ways of being and opening and embracing to the positive possibilities? And we all know uh, that, that we have this divine urge pushing us forward, obviously, especially this last week. You, I can't believe all the consciousnesses that came together with the Richard Bransoms and the uh, Elon Musk and us of Jeff Bezos, I think, is going in space tomorrow. So I cannot believe all of uh, the people that are uh, pushing that divine urge, going, you know, the call, the pull to be going higher. And so it is the divine within and all of us that has that push, has that pull. And there's a story I want to tell you, and then, I'll, then I'll, I want to hear from you. And it's a man was walking along the road, and he sees this farmer, uh, you know, with a pickaxe, picking up all the, you know, all the, the, the rocks and the soil. And so the man goes to the farmer and says, uh, why are you ruining the soil? And the man says, I'm not ruining the soil. Can't you see that orchards will not grow and roses will not grow until we get uh, rid of those of the things, the obstacles, the, uh, the upturning of the earth, the newness of the earth. And it's like that what we do, and we forget this, to heal a wound, what do you do? You lance it. Mm -hmm. To heal a heart, what do you do? You open it and allow the good to come in. So the most enormous magnet in all of us is those moments where we are drawn by something stronger and that connection with spirit, no matter what people are seeing or not seeing, Lynn, and where those moments are, you know you are one, like as Bill talked about, you're being pulled by something that is the metaphor physical that which cannot be seen okay lisa <laughs> yeah when you talk about um pushing the boundaries and going out into space and all the changes that we have experienced in technology you know very recently you know we both yeah. live in the days before cell phones <laughs> it seems like the dinosaur age for uh, for what most people think <laughs> but really is outer space the last frontier no inner space is the last frontier we tend to always look for things outside of ourselves when the real truth the real joy the real bliss that we're seeking is right here inside of us and in your topic when you say letting go of negativity to open the door for positivity it is that process if you're experiencing negativity, you can't just deny it and say, I'm gonna be positive, I'm gonna be positive. You can't put positivity on top of negativity. You have to release the negativity first. Then the positivity comes. But then there's something more than that. Because it's like, 
I have to put this here because I got to I got to talk with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got the negativity on one side, you've got the positivity on the other side. This world is a coexistence of opposites. That's just the way it works. You can't have one with the other. We will never be an all positive glowing world. We will never not have some kind of war. It's just not going to happen. It's a balance. And that's what keeps us growing and growing and learning and evolving and getting better and better all the time. But better does not mean only positive. It's, it's that push and pull. So what happens is in Vedanta, the negativity, the heaviness, our, our tendencies towards that is called Thomas. And that's, um, it's heavy, it's dark, it's like makes us depressed. And we're humans, we're prone to this. You know, we sometimes tip the balance in that scale, all right? But then the positivity, the extra, oh, I'm happy, I'm gonna go in, that, that overactivity, that's called rajas. But in the middle, there's something called sattva, and that's like that fulcrum, that balance, right? And that's kind of where we want to be, because then we're not depressed and we're not hyper or manic or anything, but we come right to the center and we're sattvic and we're pure and we understand the balance and we understand that there's no judgment between what's negative, what's positive, because how do we know what's negative and what's positive? So many times, like you were talking about the earth, it looks like a negative thing to dig up the earth, right? But no, that's a very positive thing. Just like when we had those awful fires, it was awful, right? But many agricultural experts said, that was so necessary for the land. Every 20 or something years, it needs to burn up for new growth to happen. Otherwise it just stagnates. But then what we have to remember, and this is the big thing is, just cause we're here in balance does not mean we're where we wanna be. We have to then also transcend that to go to God to connect with God. That's the only way we can get there. We can't get there from here. We can't get there from here. We have to come to the center, be in balance, and then go like that. Okay. Oh, I, that was beautiful. <laughs> and I agreed. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and it is interesting when you talk about inner space uh, being the next great frontier. It is that which is unknown and it is the shadow self that many times keeps us negative and staying negative and staying safe, as we say, and not looking out beside. But we all know it's like I love uh, that planting seeds because the, the seed needs the resistance of the soil to grow we need the resistance to come out of apathy instead of uh what was that pleasantville where everything was black and white and everything oh, stayed right. the yeah, same yeah, yeah, yeah. all the time mm -hmm. so we do need that uh emphasis but i am telling you also in the sattva mm -hmm. uh this last 17 or 18 months my life has certain my inner life has certainly changed a lot and it was interesting because we came out and with new technology here number one I hope out there in Facebook world you're enjoying it mm -hmm. <laughs> because it is seamless because of our uh, singer and engineer um, Ryan Kimmery uh, upgraded us to everything but back to this it seems that the innate God that was within us it it offers unfathomable tools but it takes our connection to connect with it and the negativity as I say if the only tool you have in your spiritual toolbox is a hammer everything looks like a, a nail mm -hmm. and also we cannot put you know this goes back to the Bible uh, you cannot put uh, new wine in old wineskins mm -hmm. and so when we are looking at moving forward now this is the fastest I've ever moved forward in my life where we're on like hyper speed almost or super speed it mm -hmm. seems like and yet what did we do we went and we sequestered to get there in some ways mm -hmm. uh, during the COVID uh, I remember this is so funny I was still typing on a typewriter at 38 
And someone introduced me to a computer, and just that thought, that thought process was just beyond me. I could not understand where this information was coming from, how it could correct, all of those things. And here we are today, and even in hyperspace with technology, uh, creating something even greater mm -hmm. and connecting worldwide with people that we haven't connected to before. Yeah. So the tools that we desire the most are to not go back into past negative habits. Mm -hmm. And I think the 17 months for me, because uh, that's my only mirror sometimes is me. My only understanding is that which I'm getting from above mm -hmm. and, 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 and embracing. And a lot of time spent at the beach <laughs> in the oneness by mm -hmm. myself meditating. Mm -hmm. I really, I really get that there is so much more to embrace and to give and to be in our own beingness. And it took that sattva, that time, for it to not only set in, but to not go back to many of my past negative habits. So much happened in my personal life. What about you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, in the last 17 months. And it's amazing because it's not like a it's it's like winter right because we all have these seasons in life and i think that we needed it we needed this time of self-reflection and quiet to go within and to really examine what's going on and what's going right what's not going right what needs to change and that's that's what nature does in the winter right it's kind of pauses before then comes the spring. And now I think as we are starting to emerge from that winter of discontent or whatever, <laughs> we're having the newness spring up. And and there's going to be a lot of interesting new opportunities that come out of it for all of us. Oh, oh my God. One of them also, there's a couple, we did have losses during this time. Oh, yes. One from COVID, one from our wonderful Reverend Betty Ann, who when I was, who, uh, she was so clear. She was so clear in her thinking and her thoughts. And so I knew when she was unhappy with something or wasn't comfortable with something. And I said, Betty Ann, I'm going to come out with my, my laptop and we're going to go on, you're going to do a Thursday night uplift because she didn't want to be on Facebook. And I think, oh my God, did I kill her? I mean, you know, yeah. by pushing her to go on Facebook. But she said, oh, okay. I mean, you know, she was not. And yet she was a computer scientist. She yeah. was one of the first women at Stanford that had her, com you know, that, that used computers and taught others and was into programming. So it's amazing to me exactly. Uh, the timing was like, okay, I'm done. I don't want to, I don't want to come back back I think and and do it the same way yeah. she moved on to a higher place a higher understanding and yet her presence is always here guiding and providing us and it shows up in so many interesting ways like uh, her picture will all of a sudden pop up and I think where did that come from on yeah. my phone yeah yeah so, uh, but she's always time, with us yes and I yes. think that the way you could kind of pivot in this situation with the lockdown and everything. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? So we didn't have much choice. We had to do things differently and it stretched us and helped us to learn and grow as we moved through it. Mm -hmm. And now it's like bigger and better, right? Mm -hmm. Bigger and better and who knows what's next? It, we Nobody knows what's next, but it's exciting to anticipate the something that's going to come. You know, it is so interesting. Uh, years ago, um, uh, my daughter told me years ago, she was living in Santa Barbara. Works, she still works in Santa Barbara, but now it's, she's mainly online at Raytheon. And uh, she told me, Mom, I'm never coming back to Camarillo. I love Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so lovely. And before COVID, she got pregnant. <laughs> 
And so she moved two blocks from me. And I used to say, I just wish she'd come home. I just went, well, now she bought the house next to me. <laughs> I thought, That's maybe funny. I wished you are. Maybe I said this Be to you. Be careful what you wish for. You know, in the middle of the day, the kids yeah. come up, they run <laughs> over and stuff like this. But it is interesting. And I said to Gina Stangby, who isn't here, who has children graduating, and uh, Plumman and Savina, too. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, I used to say, come home, honey. Come home anytime you want. I thought she'd have at least her laundry. No, she got a job. And so it was on the weekends <laughs> at Macy's. So I thought, well, she's gone. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying? You never, never know who's going to come back home. Yeah. And so I, I just think it's hilarious that I uh, I wanted this. Uh, this is, I think I should have backed off a little with the closeness. <laughs> <laughs> the neighbor, across, now we live on, there's only like really five neighbors on our mm -hmm. block. And so in the, on our half of the block. And the neighbor that lives across from Katie mm -hmm. uh, said, she when she came out, she said, it's so nice to have Katie back, you mm -hmm. know? And then she said, uh, I said to, I say to Vic all the time, could she get any closer to her mother than this? <laughs> <laughs> it is funny, but, yeah. uh, but that happened so rapidly too, that everything, and that was a divine, um, uh, we were already looking at having her build behind me yeah. and it's really interesting. It's that amazing how the house kids, came up. Yeah, these sale. kids grow up and like my no. Brian, my younger son, even though it was COVID and lockdown, he'd been saving up for a house and he happened to buy the house. And then, of course, he needed his mom to help him fix up the house. Oh, yay! So it was great because we had good bonding time because we were a pod. You know, you can't go out with everybody, but, you know, Brian and I were a pod. So I got the opportunity to help him build, basically, from the ground up, his own little house. And I've been wanting and wanting and wanting, like, grandkids in the U.S. I have five grandkids in Australia, but I have no grandkids in the U.S. Brian got a dog. So I have a grand puppy now. <laughs> grand dog. Josie. And she, I love this dog, you know. Aww. And Brian's going to Hawaii. I said, I don't know who I'm going to miss more. You or Josie. <laughs> I know. But, yeah, I, I mean, it. things bring us closer mm -hmm. in life. And that's the goal of life, right? Because when you get to know yourself and you're able to share yourself in such a way, then you understand that we are all one. We're, we're more than all one. We're all the same. All the experiences we share, we've all experienced losing a loved one. And it's, you know, and we, we our heart breaks because we know what that's like. You know, we've all experienced pain and loss, and we've all experienced joy and happiness, and we can connect to each other in that way and help each other learn and grow and get through it and not get negative about it, get down in the mire of the depression and and not be so elated when we got the promotion or whatever, the we won the lottery, whatever. Because all those things are only temporary. What's truly real is our connection with God. So if either of those things can help us get there, which is where we want to be, amen. You know, and our wonderful Reverend Betty Ann always said, my life is unfolding perfectly no matter what. And Ralph, this is kudos to you. You have done... Um, I, I immediately went into my mothering and thinking, I don't know if he knows how to use the internet. I don't know. If he knows. And you have uh, just risen above uh, the obstacles, so many of them. And you created that, the Betty Ann's uh, service. You were very particular what you wanted and you wanted to make sure she was honored. And you were just so clear about everything. So kudos for you in this short yeah. period. And, and how an much you, because she did, uh, oh yeah, well, because she did, uh, I know she did all the stuff in the house, the bills and all that stuff. So that's, that's a big thing. And all I know also is after being with Patrick for like 35 years, I didn't know where I began and he ended. I didn't even know who I was. You don't even realize that. So congratulations on, on, um, 
continuing and being on this planet in your own wonderful magnetic magnetic way because you are like a magnet so i'm going to close with uh tools that i've learned spiritual tools that help me and the first one is with negativity is when i say uh things about myself uh like oh how could i have done that or what was you know i think thank you for sharing the truth is, is I'm doing everything the best and highest I know how, and it's all happening and unfolding perfectly. <laughs> the second one is connect. Take time every day to pray, meditate, come to spiritual experiences like this one in person or online. We appreciate you here, of course, uh, and but I do know there's an audience out there that goes on Facebook every Sunday to watch us. So go outside if you can. Preferably uh, walk outside, and it is the most restoring thing to be with nature, because that is what we are. We are all one. That is simple as that. Uh, make time for short breaks in between, and in those short breaks during the day, because I, I know you're on your computer. all are we all are, but take time just to connect to the to the Twenty years before when the internet came out came out i 've always believed we 're way ahead of this we are we were the internet before the noise came on the planet. Yeah. We knew worlds away i mean countries away what was happening. I really think, or how would people have been drawn magnetically to continue to expand and unfold and to uh, venture outward from where they were so I just think we I think that 's so wise about. Um, our greatest frontier is our inner space. Practice gratitude for all areas of your life. My master, uh, Meister Eckhart, who we know said, if uh, gratitude is the only prayer you say, that is enough. And it's so true. Instead of going to sleep, and I said this on my uplift on Thursday night, listening to the Hitler channel, which is, <laughs> which is actually the history channel, Buzz and I are in like mind about this, or I say investigative ID, which is the murder channel. <laughs> Turn off. You know, it is so interesting when you go to sleep with these things, what do you wake up with? The heebie-jeebies. <laughs> anyway, but, but go to sleep reading something spiritual, something uplifting to take you into that place that is so uh, divinely connecting you to everything. And again, a spiritual community that that supports you like this one, call us, let us be. That is why we're here. We are a praying church. And by the way, I love Science of Mind magazine. It's on sale in the bookstore, along with uh, jewelry, and there'll be more. I, I haven't had time to do this, Ralph, uh, but Betty Ann's collection, her jewelry, her... <laughs> This is funny. Someone bought some of her gold earrings that had dollar signs on them, <laughs> Therese. <laughs> and she lost one of the dollar signs. And I was so afraid to ask you, were you thinking, what does this mean? <laughs> I'm losing, I'm losing the dollar sign earrings. <laughs> what is, you know, this, it means that there's an opening for uh, more good to come in your life. And it's not limited to two little gold dollar signs <laughs> on your ears. <laughs> so also, uh, come, come when possible when you are. It's so lovely to be with you in person. And we are again. Um, uh, I, you and I, because we're speaking right now, don't have our masks on, but I am very cautious because um, of COVID. Again, I want to make sure I'm safe and that everybody else is safe out there. And just remain in faith uh, that the message of the universe, as I always say, I know, because I'm old enough to know, that the message of the universe is always conspiring on our behalf. And it's us to open up to it. And as I agree, I agree, you can't get rid of the negative. I mean, you, you just can't. But you can say this or something better when it's at its worst. I would like so much something better than this. And I am listening. I'm turning myself. You know, I just let go. I let the divine, whatever you want to call it, 
Uh, <laughs> yeah. Patrick used to make fun of things like this. He'd, I'd say, let go and let God. And you would go, yeah, yeah, let go and let God. <laughs> but you can be that, oh, because I know that without a doubt that we are these divine beings coming home and on the eternal path of becoming. So remain in faith and knowing that the message is always there, that we have that divine urge within us, no matter what age, what stage, or anything else that is pushing us, because we are so unique on this planet. There's, I've now discovered, no seashells, no grain of sand. There is nothing on this planet that is like us. Quadruples, quadruples, quintuplets, and, and uh, not, no, even twins, no fingerprints are alike. We are here to, as I say, give God a good time. And that is our purpose and our joy. And I let you close. And I just say, when in doubt, pray, meditate. Go within, be in nature, like Pam said. Walk barefoot in the park, in, on the grass. I've, I've found so much comfort through hard times just going in my garden, you know. Oh, I mean, oh and you have a labyrinth, too. Yeah, I have a I labyrinth, remember. so I can yeah. walk the labyrinth. But yeah. just, you know, that's what it's all about. Um, God's got our back. Totally. So we're never alone. Yeah. We we shouldn't be lonely because we're never alone. You know, uh, one of the things I've learned in meditation, then I, then I really will close, is that it's so important in this third dimensional body. We're here. We are chosen to be here. And it's really hard. That's my understanding of the souls coming to earth to get in an earthly incarnation because uh, it's the emotional planet. But it's important to ground us in meditation from the highest, all the dimensions, all the way down to the earth. So I met a, uh, our lead practitioner one time. And this is just a ending stupid no, but not stupid, but it is funny. But uh, she had someone come up to her Malibu Lake house and was telling us how to be more spiritual and meditate and do this. And he said, he said, and guys, he said, just go out in your bare feet in the dirt and pee. That is the greatest <laughs> thing. So I was so excited about Spencer, my son being grounded and he was living with me. And I came in and I said, Spencer, you, if 